Dr. Mampela Rampele is preparing to officially launch Akhang as a political party on Saturday. The former managing director at the World Bank has set a high target for herself. She's taking on the ANC in the 2014 elections and says she is aiming to get 10% of the vote. Of the vote. Dr. Uh, Rampele joins me now to discuss whether her plans are perhaps a little too ambitious. Good evening and thanks for coming in. Appreciate your time. Are Good you evening. ready for 2014? It's been a few months since you stepped out and you're on the cusp of actually launching this party on Saturday. We are very excited and we are convinced that South Africa is ready for change. We are not certain 10%, that was what was in the media. We are still going to be guided by polls that we are going to take regularly between now and end of the year. That's when we can be able to be much more confident about what size of the electorate we're going to win. We believe that South Africans have been waiting for a new entrant into the political scene. Because if you go to 2009, fully 41% of eligible voters didn't vote, which means they rejected the offers that were there. There is another number of millions that are being added to the voting poll, I mean the voting group, who are yet to register. These are people, mainly young people, the born freers, who are looking to the future and are not going to be looking backwards. Well, we'll talk about the specifics that you have to offer these, these younger voters, these born freers, as you call them. Elections are won not only on vision, but on the machinery of, of, of your, well, on, on your voting machine. Do you have the structures in place, the branch penetration, the areas that, that you want people to come out and vote? How confident are you that you can get that moving in, in time to get enough momentum ahead of this election? This is a 21st century party that we are forming. We are going to use digital media, which is going to get us to reach the furthest parts of South Africa. We are fortunate in that mobile penetration goes to even the gogo in Duba Duba, and we'll be able to reach it. But we are also building an extensive field management team, and that is drawn from the more than 10,000 volunteers who have registered over the last four and a half months of Ahang's uh, announcement. We are training those volunteers so that when they go and mobilize, they're also doing civic education and voter education. We have a world-class campaign team led by Ngosnati Solomon. We have team members who are drawn from business, from academia, and from the wider civil society. We are quite excited about what we have been able to achieve over the short space of time. We've also got uh, a political structure in the making. We are going to announce the head of that political architecture, who is going to be setting up provincial, national, and local structures. And, and on that point, I mean, the party is not uh, Rampele alone. There has to be a, you know, a really specific team of leaders that you surround yourself with to make it work and, and, and to have buy-in from people. Are you able to say, uh, besides a person that you won't name that you've just referred to now, other people um, that you've drawn to your side to, to help with this? We will be announcing those on Saturday. Are any of them from the ANC, perhaps? We are not going to be drawn into where they come from, but many are experienced parliamentarians, experienced and hardened activists, and they are there because they want to build the country of our dreams. As you mentioned, South Africa, you know, we, we're not short of opposition parties. We're not sure, short of opposition politics, even, even in this country. How will you be different uh, from the DA? You've seen them reposition themselves um, th this last election campaign going into 2014. What makes you different to them? What makes us different is that we are going to start with empowering the citizen. That's been the missing link in the politics of South Africa. The proportional representation system of elections that we've had over the last 19 years has demobilized citizens. 
And that is where our hand strength is going to come from. People who are tired of waiting, people who feel disrespected, people who feel that they've been treated like forgotten people. Those are the people who have the power to vote. And we are saying that we are going to be a party that's going to make sure that power is with the people, which was the rallying cry of our freedom struggle. One of the other things you spoke about, and you've been quoted as saying you've underestimated fear as a determinant to public support. As you've traveled the country and toured, I mean, what exactly are you talking about? What, what fear and, and intimidation exactly is this? The interesting thing is that ordinary people, young people, are not afraid. But the upper middle class and the middle class are worried about losing the benefits of the extensive patronage system that this government has built, which is really a system of corrupt relationships, where business is channeled by government officials to themselves, their families, and their friends. And that's what we also are going to make the number one target, a war on corruption so that we can make sure that citizens of South Africa benefit from the fruits of freedom and that freedom is not stolen from them by corruption and nepotism. Well, well let's talk about things uh, like coalitions. A, a lot of analysts, uh, you know, on, on, on the eve of you launching your party, saying that by doing so, you are actually going to fragment the opposition. Say you launch, say things are successful, and, and you get a sizable number of, of, of disgruntled, disaffected voters to come on board. Would you consider coalitions with, with the likes of, of the DA? Would you, would you consider a coalition with the likes of Malema, who we understand is launching the party? Our focus is on building a hang and on fighting to win in 2014. Is that a no? And we will decide at the appropriate time who we coalesce with, and our coalitions will be principled. It will be only with those parties that share our commitment to the foundation values of our constitution, which is human dignity, equality, and freedom. You mentioned political risk taking. Um, you know, today when you were, when you were talking or, or, or delivering your criticism of the ANC's, you called it failure on, on education policy. You talked about um, the poor teaching standards and so on, talking about taking political risks to correct that. What, what, what are you talking about and does it only, is it only restricted to things like education? I mean, what other areas in South African politics do you think political risks are needed? I don't know the reference you're making to political risk. What I was talking about is that South Africans have to stand up and work together to make sure that we tackle the failures. They're not said to be failures. By the government's own admission, 80% of our schools are dysfunctional. Millions of young people are walking the streets with degrees, with diplomas, but they don't have the skills that are necessary because our education system is failing at a massive, massive scale. Would, would you fire everyone if, if, if you had the power to? Not a question of firing. We need, like in any other system, an audit of the competencies of our teachers. There are many good teachers, but there are many who are not really able to teach. There are tests that have been done where teachers at the grade six level can't pass tests at that level. Now those people should not be exposed to our children because they are in fact still in the future of our children. But the most important intervention that we want to make is to make sure that we raise the level of ambition in our education system. How can you look children in the eye and say 30% and 40% is good enough for them to pass? It's a statement of lack of confidence in young people. Every young child is born with a genius to excel in one or other area. That's what we're going to focus on. We're going to focus also on what the government has failed to do, simple statement, statement of norms and standards, so that we can, in fact, have an education system that has got the infrastructure that is suitable for children in the 21st century. We'll leave it then. We'll certainly uh, keep an eye on your launch uh, this, this coming weekend. Thank you for your time. Akhang's leader, Mampela Rampele. Thank you. News that moves. ENCA.com.